Uh, uh, before I quite call this meeting to order, I want to point out that there is a candle in front of David Rabbit, and that means that it is his birthday, the two pastries he is required to eat before they get stale. Um, but I, I think we need to subject everybody to uh, a, singing, a rendition of Happy Birthday. So, Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear David. Happy Birthday to you. All I know is if you come to a meeting and there's a candle in front of your nameplate, make sure you're standing. <laughs> Thank you all. So now I'll call the order of the meeting of the Board of Directors of Friday, September 22nd, 2023. Please note the meeting is being recorded. Thank you to members of the public uh, with us here today and joining us uh, on by audio. I appreciate everybody's patience as we endure today's meeting. Um, and um, um, Director uh, Cochran, would you lead us? Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Thank you. <laughs> Director Conroy. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going back to the roll call. Director Conroy. Thank you. Director Dorsey. Present. Ingardio. Present. Barbarino. Present. Judice. Mm -hmm. Is absent. Grosbowl. Present. Hernandez. Here. Mastin. Here. Moulton Peters. Is absent. Barr. Present. Rabbit. Here. Redoni. Here. Safai. Snyder. Here. Stephanie. Present. Here. Present. Second Vice President Hill. Here. First Vice President Cochran. Here. And President Terrio. Here. Thank you. You have one. Uh, thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda would be public comment. Um, we have, I see some folks here who I'm sure want to speak. Do we have cards? We have a card for Mr. Rohde. Go and then we do have someone on the line who'd like to speak. So, Mr. Rodi, since you're here in person, you can approach the podium first. Good morning. My name is Dave Rodi. I'm the San Francisco Policy Co chair for Al Gore's Climate Reality Project. This past weekend in New York City, 75,000 people participated in the march to end fossil fuel. 650,000 others marched around the world demanding global leaders to take action to address the climate crisis. All these marches were part of Climate Week, which uh, begins began on Wednesday in New York City, uh, leading up to the United Nations Climate Ambition Summit. But the summit failed to attract the leaders of the two greatest carbon emitters, with neither President Biden nor Xi Jinping of China attending. British Prime Minister, Prime Minister Sunak and French President Macron were also no-shows. What does this global and national gap and climate commitment have to do with the Golden Gate Bridge District? One obvious connection is that the climate crisis is the greatest threat humanity has ever faced, and we need all hands on, direct, on deck to address it. You, of course, already know that. In 2019, this board passed a climate emergency resolution. I quote, resolved that the district declares that a climate emergency threatens our cities, regions, states, nations, civilization, humanity, and the natural world. Despite the fact that Joe Biden has passed the strongest climate bill in U.S. history, he has yet to declare a climate emergency as you have. And I applaud you again for that. I wanted to remind you of your 2019 declaration as you continue to work on the district's 2023 strategic plan. I provided written input for that plan citing the need to move as quickly as possible to electric buses and ferries. But I went beyond that to say that the Golden Gate Bridge District is, is in a position to be a leader in climate mitigation, presenting the public with hope for the future and inspiring climate leadership in California and across the nation. I remind you again that your transition from petroleum to biodiesel that you're currently using in your buses and ferries is not a solution. The EPA just reinforced that fact with a 2023 report that said, depending on the feedstock and production process, 
Biofuels can emit even more greenhouse gases than fossil fuels on an energy equivalent basis. You can do better. Catherine McKenna, a net zero emissions expert for the United Nations, wrote a Time article this week. Yes, she said, we need a 2045 net zero goal, but like an athlete training for the Olympics a decade out, we also need the accountability that comes from near-term targets. For the world, this means peaking global emissions by 2025 and halving them by 2030. McKenna also voiced what I've come here every month to remind you. We need leaders with the grit, integrity, and relentless drive of elite athletes. The starting gun was fired long ago. We're in the race of a lifetime. Thank you for listening. You're ready. Uh, do we have anyone else uh, from the public present who wishes to speak today? Um, President Terry, no I would. Yes, please. Uh, do we have anybody online? Uh, uh, Ms. Bach to speak. Yes, we do. Um, our next speaker is Manuel Gamboa. Thank you. Mr. Gamboa. Hello. Hello. Uh, morning, everybody. Um, i just like to say that uh, Wednesday, I was out at the bridge and uh, seeing all the construction or of the uh, net looked pretty good and looked like it's almost done and it looked I, I guess what it's supposed to to look like and that's to save lives um, so once again I thank you guys and everybody that's involved in this making it happen and um, I also like to share uh, I was out there Wednesday uh, because that was uh, 10 years that uh, my son Kyle uh, jumped off and, um, you know, we were out there memorializing him and um, it was it was real nice just to see the, the process of that net and um, with that, uh, I'd also like to share that his his death is getting easier with me. Um, you know, that was my main kind of my one of my main messages was I didn't want another dad or family member or anyone to be going through the feelings that I've been going through. But uh, still having, and probably will be, just a hard time remembering my son and, you know, where would he be right now and what would he be doing? And But um, seeing that net and knowing it's going to save lives and knowing it could have prevented him from dying there that day, it's it's heartwarming. So. So with that, I just want to wish everybody a happy weekend, and uh, we'll talk. We'll talk again. Anyone else from the public to speak? President Terrio, if you don't mind, I would like to pull the room. Please do. You did. Have, thank you so much. Is there anybody new that's joined us that would like to speak? Please use star star to unmute yourself and let me know. Okay, I'm not hearing anybody else. No more speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that then is public comment. Uh, General Manager Mulligan, uh, did you want to comment on anything in public comment? I would just like to thank uh, Manuel Gamboa for his tireless advocacy these last 10 years that we're very sorry for his loss and that I uh, just want to assure him that his efforts have led to tremendous success with respect to our commitment and focus to build a net to save lives. With respect to Mr. Rohde, I acknowledge that uh, renewable diesel is not a solution, it's just an interim step on a journey and that we have lots of hard work ahead of us and we appreciate his advocacy and his constant reminders that we need more. And that concludes our responses.
Thank you, Mr. Mulligan. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. Uh, it's been just the minutes have, uh, uh, the meetings have been distributed to the board uh, already. A chance to review them. Uh, are there questions, comments, corrections on the minutes? I am seeing none. Is there a motion to accept the consent calendar? Mm -hmm. Second. And there's a second. Uh, Madam Secretary, then a roll call vote. <clears throat> Thank you. We're voting on item number five, so I'll start with Director Conroy. Aye. Dorsey? Aye. Ingardia? Aye. Barbarina? Aye. Judith Che is absent. Grosbold? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Mastin? Aye. Holton Peters is absent. Parr? Aye. Rabbit? Aye. Bredoni? Aye. Safai? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Beer? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Terry? Yes. Thank you. 17 minutes. <laughs> makes it go. Uh, all right. Um, next item on the agenda is the general manager's report. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board, members of the public and staff. My written report is before you. I will just mention a couple of items that are particularly noteworthy. The one is a pension update. Last month, you requested, uh, we just, or two months ago, I guess, the uh, Golden Gate Transit Amalgamated Retirement Plan. Um, uh, as an actuary, they had a presentation, and based on that, last month the board directed that this month uh, GT TARP actuary come do a presentation to us. That the actuary is out of the country, so you will have that presentation at your October meeting, uh, hopefully in our boardroom at the bridge. Um, but with respect to pensions, district employees participate in one of four different pension plans based on their collective bargaining agreements, and our deckhands and terminal assistants participate in the Inland Boatman's Union of the Pacific National Pension Plan, it's a multi employer plan. That plan has gone through a bumpy road over the last couple decades. Uh, so I'm pleased to inform you that on September 13th, the IBU Pension Actuary submitted to the Internal Revenue Service their certification of green status for the plan year that began July 1st. So I want to recognize that and kudos to the IBU plan participants, professionals, and trustees. It's a huge accomplishment. It was a tough road. Uh, next, I'd like to mention that for the last four days, uh, your ferry staff with staff from about three dozen agencies has been very active on San Francisco Bay public and private ferry operators and uh, tour boat operators, along with first responders, fire department, law enforcement, uh, and U.S. Coast Guard. It was a multi-day effort. Uh, the Bridge District was the host. We received the grant, and in cooperation with the Coast Guard and WIDA, uh, we ran this exercise. Uh, there's multiple active threat scenarios. Uh, there'll be a debrief following the exercises. Uh, lots to be learned. It's the sixth time that we've led this effort. This was by far the biggest. All the prior exercises were just one day. This was a four-day effort. And uh, arguably, it was a good practice and training for the upcoming APEC summit that will be occurring in mid-November. Uh, with respect to traffic, uh, traffic. Yes. Uh, the Secret Service is involved in our planning efforts for APEC. So staff attends meetings with the Coast Guard and Secret Service on the water side. Um, well, we're doing a lot of planning in our we think the reason we received a much larger grant than usual enough for four days of exercise as opposed to one is because of APEC. Uh, APEC does affect us at bridge, bus, and ferry, uh, so there's a tremendous amount of planning going on. We're working on the water side with the Coast Guard Secret Service, on the land side, obviously, with SFMTA, uh, with respect to very street closures and rerouting. And then, obviously, as the, as the bridge is an international icon, it's a place where some people may want to hang banners. So we anticipate lots of uh, busy times that week for all of our staff. With respect to uh, travel in the Bolivia quarter by bridge, bus, and boat, it is still below pre-pandemic level, so it is slowly inching upward. Um, the week of September 3rd, revenues were down about $1 million in tolls and transit fares compared to the same week pre-pandemic. So we're actively managing our expenses uh, to make sure that we have our one time that'll cover the least money last as long as possible. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about employee recognition. Uh, we have an employee who's been a bus operator for us for 35 years. <clears throat> so I want to give a shout out to Wolfred Marlin Owens, who's been with us for 35 years driving a bus. He joined us on September 12th of 1988. Uh, he's uh, been active in a whole host of different activities, volunteering his time for various driver initiatives to help encourage us to do a better job. He's noted for his courtesy and thoughtfulness. Um, his father worked for Greyhound for 30 years, and his mother was a conductor, and his aunt uh, was, were among the first five women hired at Muni. 
So his family has a long history of uh, being active in transit. Uh, his wife works for AC Transit. And uh, he holds the distinction of being the second longest, uh, or his wife serves a distinction of being the second longest sitting ATU president uh, at the uh, Central Contra Costa County Transportation Authority behind uh, Mr. Tony Whittington, who has a record for the longest ATU tender, who many of you know. Anyway, uh, he's going to study law in his spare time, and uh, he worked previously in broadcasting, I think he's getting back into it, and uh, he's just a fun person to be around. So uh, kudos to him on his 35 years. Uh, we have one employee who, by comparison, sounds like a newbie. He has only 25 years of service. <laughs> and that's uh, Aaron Kozlowski. He's our chief operating engineer. And on September 4th, he celebrated 20 years, excuse me, 20 years, not 25. That's why it's newbie. 20 years of service. He joined us on September 4th, uh, 2003. And during his career with the district, he was the employee of the month in 2014. Um, he's worked in mechanic for much of his life. He enjoys hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, and spending time with his family. Uh, so I'm very pleased to uh, page, announce the Employee of the Month. The Employee of the Month Committee selected Swing uh, Servicer Andrew Bianchi to the bus division as the Employee of the Month for 2023. He's recognized for his reliable and consistent work ethic. The bus servicers clean and fuel our buses at night and play a vital role in us providing first class service to our customers. Uh, he's always available to help his peers. He's known for treating everyone professionally with respect. He makes com countless contributions and he steps up whenever needed. A special note, his coworkers say that he is very deserving of this recognition uh, because of his attitude and his go-getter approach to things. He started with the district in October 3rd, 2016, so he's been with us about seven years. He was born in the North Bay in Katati. He's been a resident of Santa Rosa since 2017. He lives with his wife, Heidi, daughter, Kennedy, and son, Hudson. He enjoys spending time with his family, golfing, and watching and attending sporting events. He's proud that he coached the high school football team at Rancho Cotati High School in 2005 to 2016. So he was selected by his colleagues. So kudos to Mr. Andrew Bianchi. And that concludes my report. Thank you, uh, General Manager Mulligan. Are there questions for Mr. Mulligan on this report? I do have one remark, and that was uh, by my recollection that Inland Boatman's pension was was an ERISA plan in what uh, is called the red zone in the, in the ERISA system, which is pretty dire. Uh, and uh, and so it is it is it is amazingly good news. That it has come back all the way to the green zone and uh, gives me some hope for the bus driver's pension as well. Thanks for acknowledging that. It, it arguably offers a roadmap for the bus driver's pension to achieve similar success. Director Snyder. Director Snyder. Good question. Yes. Uh, so what, uh, do you know if they, um, if the Narissa plan, if they apply for any of the bailout funds? I, that I don't know. I'll check into it and get back to you. They have, you know, negotiated contributions with us, and they have uh, made modifications to the plan over the years in response to the ups and downs. Uh, but I will follow up on that. Uh, yes. You know, I'm just going to respond. It probably doesn't belong in Dennis's report, but I just want to acknowledge Daniel Gamboa, and some of you may have seen he's done this. They've done this for the entire senior period. Is that they do it? They did not. They did an ad in the Chronicle two days ago in the obituary section on him. Their son, he was 18. The irony of that jump, they're all horrible, is that that took place on the day of the board meeting and jumped 11.45. It's just very sad. Sad day 10 years ago. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Director Grossman. Anyone else on the general manager's report? All right. Uh, seeing none, uh, next we have the attorney's report. Uh, Mr. Manolius. Thanks, President Trejo. Um, my written report before you. If you have any questions, let me know. No closed sessions for the full board today, so that's only two things. Are there questions or comments for Mr. Menores? I am seeing none. Uh, and so, uh, Ms. Barr Furbush, our, our engineer, uh, your report, please. Thank you, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. Directorial members of the board, my written report is before you. And I would like to talk a little bit of uh, four projects that are presented in my report. The first one is the suicide deterrent, and uh, the work is progressing. 
uh, south approach viaduct. They work right now. They completed the east side of the net and they progressing with the west side. And they working also on the net support installation at the Fort Point Arch. Uh, on the suspension bridge, at the south back span and the north portion of the main span, uh, the contractor uh, continues sewing the net. Uh, on the North uh, Anchorage House, you may um, recall that we are installing a 12 foot tall um, steel railing. So all the posts are in place right now and uh, we inspect that the contractor will begin installation of the fence panels in about two weeks. Uh, and finally, on the uh, on the very no on, on the both towers, uh, the north tower um, is uh, right now uh, progressing with the uh, sewing of the net, and the south tower, the contractor is working on the installation of the net support. Uh, moving on, uh, your favorite project, the elevator. <laughs> so as we speak, we have uh, an inspector on site. And I got an email uh, from my engineer uh, who says that uh, all the major components passed the, passed the inspection. The inspector requests more light and a um, couple more fire extinguishers. So everything is minor. So Amoret, I think we should be gearing up for moving into our house, right? <laughs> well. <laughs> Right, and uh, also big news is on the, another project for the toll plaza paving, the major work. The major work that will have an impact of, on traveling public. We saw as minimum as possible. The contractor will start night work of removing the old paint and repaving the, the area next Monday and will be working every night next week and there are two areas you can imagine when you go southbound, the very right lane with the exit on Merchant Road. This is a very difficult place where to repave this area, we'll have to close that off ramp. So we are coordinating with um, agencies in San Francisco with regard to buses and so on. So uh, for this reason, this area is moved to be painted to the following week Friday because this is the time we can have a much longer lane closure. This coming, I mean, the next week Friday, uh, we, the contractor will do similar exercise on the northbound, where when you come to the bridge, there is this ex exit on the east parking lot and the entry to northbound 101. This has to also be coordinated with other agencies and requires longer night closure. So this is done next week Friday and the other side southbound will be done the following week Friday. Uh, so uh, there are signs posted to inform the public and pa Paolo um, is working with the media to make sure that the, that the public is fully informed. Um, so hopefully after this little pain we'll have a brand new brand new striped pavement on the toll plaza. Um, uh, finally, you may see a note in my engineer's report on page 46. This is about the Corte Madera invasive vegeta vegetation removal. Uh, as guided by the board, we are talking with the consultant and they are in consultation with the Marine County Parks Department. Uh, we know that the herbicide, the uh, contractor plan to use is approved by US EPA and also by the California uh, Water Board for uh, aquatic uses. However, it's not on the Marine County um, IPM list. So uh, the consultant is consulting with the county on um, other possible uh, approved herbicides and if this is not available to us. Um, you see in the in my engineers report there is this anticipated problem that uh, after removing the really large balls of the roots of pampas grasses, they tend to 
uh, be very resilient to sunlight sometimes. So we may experience regrowth, and if we cannot use uh, targeted, we cannot have targeted use of herbicides, then we will have to go to mechanical. But um, we will we will not know what we need to do until two years from now. So at the, closer to that time, we will probably we either inform you where everything stands or we'll bring for your approval an amendment to consultants' uh, professional services agreement. So with this, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are there questions or comments for Ms. Bauer? Um, I actually have a question. Um, with respect to um, alternative methods, uh, there are a lot of other methods aside from using the herbicides, and I'm wondering if you're working with the consultants to look at those methods. Right. So what they are looking into, the only other method is, I have to say it in a simple way, it's, it's basic, cut, cut the, the, the balls of the roots in pieces and remove them. Okay, okay. And then I, I think within also another thing you, you might want to explore is uh, within the Marin County ICAM policy, there are other things that you can use that are not herbicides. Right. So and, it's, it's, and so there are a lot of other steps before you decide, you know, within that policy, it's an integrated pest management policy. So you're looking at all of the steps you do before you get to application of an herbicide. So that was something I was hopeful that staff could explore. Um, and then the next thing is, uh, I would like a report back, uh, if possible, at the next meeting. I don't know why we would wait two years uh, for this decision um, and for a report back. So I would love to have this a continuing item if we would share if that's acceptable or appropriate. Uh, so that we can uh, know where we stand uh, with this. You know, I do I do understand that the, the choice not to use uh, herbicides and pesticides may cause us to spend a little bit more money, but we actually are talking about a marshland, and if we blight it today, and uh, I won't sleep at night until I know what we're doing, <laughs> and if there's a way that we can uh, do it in the most environmentally sensitive way, you know that's that's what I uh, would love to see here. And I and I do want to thank you for your efforts. You know I I know it's difficult once a contract has been negotiated and it's all buttoned up to try to make a change. But um, you know this is a change that will affect uh, water quality and will affect the health of uh, not just this generation but many generations to come. So may staff will keep this in the engineer's report yeah, until such time as the work is sure, complete. If I may, uh, you may notice that the consultant is consulting with the Marine County regarding the um, IPN to make sure that whatever the uh, approved pro procedures are for removing of compass grass uh, in IPN, we can adopt this. So, yes, definitely next month I will provide the board with my update on the situation. And um, I can assure you that the consultant is not resistant to the change. Uh, they are very good people. They are really very conscientious about not harming anything. Um, they are in this type of business. So their business is to protect the environment. Are there any other questions for Ms. Bauer for Bush? Then thank you, Ms. Bauer Fairbush, for your report. Uh, I want to uh, point out that uh, the sound you hear out there, I think uh, Director Snyder and Director Hernandez will agree with this retired iron worker is music. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we, we did receive uh, a late card, a uh, public speaking card from Mr. David Pilpel. Uh, what I would look for is a motion and a second to reopen public comment to take his comments. So move. Second. Is there any any uh, disagreement with that action? Seeing none, Mr. Pilka. Thank you. Without objection. Um, sorry, I was uh, delayed. Muni had a new operator who was in training, so apparently they are able to hire a bus driver. Hopefully, the district is able to as well. Um, I just had uh, two items to call to your attention um, to uh, extend or revise my remarks 
uh, from yesterday about um, the, the Transportation Committee. Um, I recall that the uh, board, or at least the Transportation Committee, in past years, maybe a long time ago, probably when Alan or Jerome were uh, planning director, maybe under Celia, way back, um, reviewed uh, route and system uh, performance um, to check that there were uh, 25 passengers per trip or how that uh, varied. Anyway, longtime board members may recall that. I recall that. I was not suggesting that level of analysis uh, on a quarterly basis, but more like the uh, back and forth that was had with uh, General Manager Mulligan, just a very high level summary of uh, service changes and, and analysis. And that that worked for me yesterday. That was, that was good. Um, relative to other meeting uh, schedules, from my perspective, the last uh, three months, uh, July, August, and September, have been, I would say, relatively light in terms of items. And I would encourage the board to think about uh, whether there's an opportunity when it's a, a light month to not meet over two days, but to maybe do it on one day, on Friday, uh, start maybe earlier, have the board meeting start a little later, and just, you know, get the gang together, but not necessarily all two days. And to the extent that you're having uh, board advisory committee meetings that are not public, I respect that. Perhaps those could be uh, conducted uh, by video or audio uh, teleconference. Um, anyway, I'm just looking at, at ways to minimize the burdens on all of you in terms of travel, transportation, et, et cetera, uh, and uh, officers, uh, staff, and the public. And just finally, um, as I was walking in, the general manager was talking about APEC. That's going to be, I think, a pretty significant event that week. The board is scheduled to meet that week. That might be an opportunity to either meet just on one day to move the meeting to the prior week uh, or to maybe just cancel if there are no significant items, if there are things that can be moved up to October or back to December. Anyway, I, I, I tread carefully on all these areas about board scheduling, but I wanted to raise that as a concerned member of the public for you to think about. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Pilpel. I actually will remark that, um, uh, yeah, including advisory committee meetings, some of us here were here yesterday from 9 till about 3.30, uh, and uh, others uh, will be here today from 10 to about the same time, I think. Uh, so um, it, 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 not everything is as it appears. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Bach, uh, did you have anybody else uh, now that we have public comment real? I'm happy to pull President Terrio. Just please. give me one moment. Is there anybody new that's joined us that would like to speak this morning at the board meeting? Please use star star to unmute yourself and let me know. I am not hearing anybody. Thank you, Ms. Bach. And then uh, we are done again. Uh, and we can move along to action items. Um, Building up an operating committee uh, met yesterday uh, and discussed uh, at some length an item that uh, is coming before you. Uh, Chair Garbarino, uh, your report, please. Thank you, President Terrio. The building and operating committee, as he just stated, is met yesterday and is recommending approval of board agenda item number 8A1, which is to approve award of contract number 2023-BT. 071 Transit Data Dashboard to Swiftly Incorporated of San Francisco for a total amount of $411,449 for a one-year term with two additional one-year option terms to maintain access to data and visualization software for analysis of transit operational and scheduling system performance and authorize the general manager or designee to approve amendments to the contract to allow for future years annual recurring maintenance and support after the one-year base term and two one-year option terms, providing that the funding has been allocated in the annual budget and such renewals are in the district's best interest, as detailed in the staff report and I assume. That was lengthy, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> is there a second? Okay. There is a second. Uh, is there any uh, further discussion on this item? Seeing none, uh, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Thank you. We're voting on item 8A1. We'll start with uh, Director Conroy. Aye. Dorsey? Aye. Ingardio? Aye. Garbarino? Aye. Judith Chia's absent, Grosbold? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. 
Mastin? Aye. Bolton Peters? Yes. Parr? Aye. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni? Aye. Safai? Stepped out for a second. Snyder? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Beer? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Terrio? Yes. Thank you. You have 17 ayes. 17 ayes. Again, uh, motion passes. Um, Chair Carberino, do you have anything more for us? Uh, that, uh, Mr. President, concludes my report in the world's longest sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Chair Hernandez, uh, with the same uh, statement to the board that uh, things were well discussed yesterday, I'm going to turn to you and, uh, uh, and ask uh, 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 for a report on, um, on, the, uh, on your committee's meeting yesterday. Thank you, Mr. President. Unfortunately, I won't be getting the report today due to a potential conflict, so I'd like to turn the presentation over to my colleague again. Um, I think this sentence will be shorter. Um, <laughs> it's fewer <not> lines. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you very much, Vice Chair Gabriel, for reporting on this. I'll be leaving the room, and I'd like to ask staff to make sure to let me know when it's safe to come. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chair Hernandez. I think I'll join the Director of Hernandez. Okay. You know what? <laughs> it's have fun out there. Um, uh, someone please get that door. Uh, Vice Chair Garber Minow. Thank you. Remaining colleagues. The Rules Policy and Industrial Relations Committee is recommending the approval of item 8B1 to approve an increase to the annual educational assistance reimbursement allocation amount to $3,000 each calendar year for eligible employees for continuing education and or professional development through a program that either offers growth in an area related to the employee's current position or might lead to promotional opportunities within the district as detailed in the staff report, and I so move. There is a motion. Second. There is a second. Uh, is there? Is there oh, okay. Um, you'll sort it. Okay. I'll sort it out. I got it. Uh, I heard it on this side. That's why. I any discussion on the motion? Again, I see none, and so, Madam Secretary, another roll call vote. A short one. Thank you. Voting on item eight B one with the first and second, starting with Director Conroy. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Gingardia. Aye. Garbarino? Aye. Judith Che is absent. Gross Paul is absent. Hernandez is absent. Mastin? Aye. Moulton Peters? Yeah. Parr? Aye. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni? Aye. Safai is absent. Snyder is absent. Stephanie? Aye. Beer? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? No. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Terrio? Yes. Thank you. You have 14 eyes. 14 eyes. Uh, the motion passes. Okay. Um, Give us one second. Please. They wanted you quite a ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're outside helping out. <laughs> <up. laughs> Checking the word. <laughs> director Snyder, Director Grossbowl, Director Hernandez, welcome back. Uh, it's pretty much just to say goodbye uh, because we have no new business listed. Uh, we have no communications uh, this month. Uh, and so the only item left is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Is there a second? Second. A couple seconds. Uh, is there any objection to adjourning? I see none. And so thanks very much. We're done. Wow.